WannaCry. For those hundreds of thousands of infected Windows machines, my condolences. Go on, you have every right to shed a tear, or two. But as with every information vacuum that arises after the latest attack, or where inadequate information is presented, conspiracy theories abound. Because how many of us really truly believe that cyber extortion was the real reason for the attack? And in bitcoins, really? So here's one theory, that this ransomware attack was actually seeded so that the bad guys would take the bait and hatch this nefarious plan. Far-fetched? That's just the start of it. Now, PRISM is a US program which compels some of the internet's biggest names, including Microsoft, Skype, Apple, Google, Facebook, Dropbox, and Yahoo to share information they collect online with the National Security Agency, or the NSA. And then there are also laws like the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and Section 215 of the Patriots Act. They all skirt constitutional protections within America's Fourth Amendment, namely the right to your personal privacy, physically, digitally, or otherwise. Which means, in other words, that many of the digital systems we use on a daily basis are deliberately designed to be and are vulnerable. Don't believe? In 2013, former CIA staffer and computer geek Edward Snowden, he supplied documents to the UK newspaper The Guardian, revealing that Microsoft collaborated with US intelligence services, including the NSA, to allow user data to be intercepted in the process circumventing Microsoft's own encryption. The information leaked, data on Microsoft SkyDrive, information from Hotmail and Outlook, and calls made on Skype, which had been bought by Microsoft nine months earlier. For the first time, the Snowden leak in 2013 showed the scale of cooperation between Silicon Valley and US intelligence agencies. The NSA has the greatest surveillance capabilities uh, that we've ever seen in history. Now, what they will argue is that they don't uh, use this for nefarious purposes uh, against American citizens. Uh, in some ways, that's true. But the real problem is that they're using these capabilities to make us vulnerable to them. As Snowden points out, these statutes allow government agencies and their corporate partners to develop far-reaching protocols for invading people's privacy. So what does all this mean? Well, with vulnerabilities engineered into the systems, governments can access them in the name of national security. And therefore, one unwanted but not unlikely development is the possibility that the global banking system and stock exchanges are open to attack in very similar ways. Maybe not from the governments themselves, but from hackers or agencies compromising these very vulnerabilities. And if such attacks occur with greater frequency, and recent history has shown that systems are increasingly vulnerable, then a major economic crisis, one that we're expecting anyway, as the 10th anniversary of the 2008 global financial crisis looms, might well be triggered by a massive compromise to the technological platforms currently holding the modern financial system together. The ensuing great global economic reset would be cataclysmic for the things we take for granted today, like financial markets, currencies, laws and governments. And like any good Hollywood movie, the storyline is suitably epic. At stake, the world order, to be replaced by a single global currency, government and economic system. Far-fetched? Hell yeah! But the signs are already there. At a recent conference discussing the future blueprint plan of world money, Mohammed El Arian, a former deputy director of the IMF and the chief economic advisor at Allianz, reiterated his support for the Special Drawing Rights, or SDR, which according to the IMF is a supplementary international reserve asset. It comprises the US dollar, the euro, the Chinese renminbi, the Japanese yen, and the British pound sterling. A new world currency, in other words, to usurp the dollar's position as the global reserve currency. Now, in the last few years, we've been treated to a smorgasbord of incredible events, any number of which would have crashed markets by now. But here we are, sailing along, stock markets at record highs, as if blissfully unaware that anything untoward might happen. Halfway through May, and investors had a pretty good start to the week. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq closed at new highs. So if the conspiracy theorists are right, and we're heading for global oblivion and a great reset, it kind of makes you question the wisdom of investing for the long term like participating in social media, or even investing in US dollars, just saying.